All right, so recently Firebase introduced version nine of the library. And the way we use version nine is a bit different to how we've been using Firebase in the past with previous versions. But before I get into those differences and talk about them, I wanted to give everyone who's completely new to Firebase a whirlwind tour of what it is. So Firebase is what's known as a backend as a service. And that means that it provides backend services like a database, authentication, file storage, cloud functions, hosting, and other things as well. And we can plug those services directly into our front end applications or websites to make use of them. And Firebase then takes care of all of the server side logic and heavy lifting so that we as developers don't need to focus much on it at all. So it's an alternative to setting up our own backend infrastructure using tools like MongoDB and a Node.js server. So instead, Firebase handles all of that for us and we can focus more on the front end of our applications and the end user experience. It's really simple to get started with and most of its features are completely free for small personal websites. So to use it, the first thing you need to do is head to the Firebase website at firebase.google.com and sign up for a free account. You should see a sign up button in the top right somewhere. And once you've done that, you should see a link instead that says something like go to console. So click on that to go to the Firebase console and your Firebase console is where all of your Firebase projects are listed. Generally speaking for each different website or application that you create, you normally have a new Firebase project for it. Anyway, before we make a new project, first I wanna talk about some of the differences between Firebase version eight and the new Firebase version nine. So the major change in version nine of Firebase is that it now adopts a more modular and functional approach, meaning that we only import the Firebase functions that we need from the libraries and not those we don't need. In contrast, version eight used a more object oriented approach where we call those functions or methods directly on Firebase objects. But by using a more functional approach and only importing the functions that we need, we can take advantage of something called tree shaking, which is where any unused code or functions can be removed from our final bundled JavaScript file. To do that, we'll need to use a module bundler like Webpack or Rollup, but we'll talk more about that in the next lesson. For now, the main takeaway point is that using Firebase 9 in this functional way means more optimized output code and a smaller file size. Now, if we quickly take a look at the code examples on the Firebase docs, we can see the difference in how we use Firebase 8 and 9 by switching between the two tabs. And you'll notice that when we select version 9, the individual functions that we need are imported from the Firebase libraries. But when we select version 8, the functions are called directly on the Firebase object. So this is the major difference between how Firebase versions 8 and 9 differ. And we'll be seeing how to use version 9 using the Firestore database and the Firebase auth service in this series. First up though, we need to set up a module bundler like Webpack in order to use the new Firebase version and take advantage of that tree shaking feature. But just two more things really quickly before we start. First of all, I've created course files for this series and you can find them at this repo right here, getting started with Firebase 9. So the link to this is gonna be down below and there's a different branch for every lesson in this series. So if you wanna see the code for lesson seven, for example, select the lesson seven branch and you're gonna see all the code and folders right here. If you wanna download a zip folder of this lesson, you can do that by clicking on this button and then going to download zip. All right, so also you'll need Node.js installed on your computer for this course as well. So if you don't have it installed already, go to nodejs.org and then download this version right here. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm gonna leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.